to catch my breath after that. Scripture this morning is from Deuteronomy 34, 1 through 12, entitled The Death of Moses. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pish Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord sh showed him the whole land, from Gilead to Dan, all the Naphtalia and territory of, territory of Ephraim, and Met Manasseh, and the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea. The Nigra came the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, and the, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land I promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to the, your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab in the valley opposite Bethur. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died, and his eyes were not weak nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all these miraculous signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials, to his whole land, for no one has ever shown the mighty power or perform the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. This week we will finish our series on gratitude. Now, after having a week off from our series, perhaps you need a reminder of our three earlier weeks, or perhaps you were just grateful to have a week off from this series. In any case, here is a reminder of what we have been discussing over the past few weeks. We talked about how nostalgia can make us miss the blessings of now, how worry and anxiety can stop us from being grateful, and how having a feeling of entitlement can prevent us from being grateful for all that the Lord gives to us. Now this week we will be focusing on disappointment and how it can cause us to fail to be grateful. Now disappointment differs from the other three things that we have discussed that stop us from being grateful. You see, the difference is with nostalgia, worry, and entitlement, those are all things that perhaps are not real. You might not really remember the way things were. And often our worries are unfounded. And you already know that we are not entitled to anything that the Lord gives us. See, all of those three things can be abstract. But disappointment is concrete. It is something that has happened to us, or maybe more accurately, something that didn't happen for us. There is not a person that has ever lived that has not at one time or another asked God why. Why did this happen to me? Why, God, did this not happen? Lord, where are you in this? Indeed, we can even look to Jesus Christ on the cross asking God, why have you forsaken me? To ask why in the face of disappointment is a very human response. 
Now, the levels of feeling disappointed can vary depending on the circumstances as well. We can be disappointed that we didn't get a job that we really wanted or needed. We can be disappointed that someone we were praying for didn't make it through their time of trouble. But we also find disappointment in much smaller things. Why isn't there any parking spaces? Why are they sold out of that one thing that I needed to get from the store today? You see, disappointment comes in both large and small moments. But in each case, when we allow it to take over, it stops us from being grateful. When we went to Florida on vacation last year, I was faced with a moment of disappointment. See, there was one ride that I was really looking forward to riding. And at the, the park we were at, they have a seat that you can test and make sure that you're going to fit on this ride, which is great because you don't end up waiting in line for an hour for the ride and get there and then tell you, you, you can't ride this. So I tried the seat last year, and much to my surprise, let's just say I was a bit too plump to ride it. So I took the little ones, and Carlin took the big kids, and they rode it. And when they got off the ride, they told me how great it was. Now, what I should have thought in this moment was, thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting us be on vacation together. Thank you for allowing us to have a wonderful time with each other. I know that this time together with my children is fleeting and will go by very quickly. So I am just so thankful to have the time here together, Lord. That would have been a great example of being grateful in the face of uh, disappointment, right? Well, as if you needed a reminder, I am indeed quite human because that is not what I felt and that is not what I said. I felt myself and I found myself feeling down and out like a total failure of a human being and questioning how did I get to this point? And I know that this sounds like one of those small incidences in life, right? All it was was trying to get on a, a ride. Because when you view it in the big picture, it really is a small moment of disappointment. But at the time, for me, it felt like it was the end of the world. Now, it's not on the level of being promised to go into the promised land after a lifetime of leading the Israelites and then finding out that you will not go into the promised land. But at the time, it sure felt like it for me. Well, when we decided to go back this year, to, I said to myself, I'm getting on that ride. So I tried to do what I could to lose some weight, and though it hasn't been a dramatic change for me, I was able to ride it this time. Oh, oh just barely. Uh, the ride is Hagrid's Motorbike Roller Coaster. Uh, so I was just barely able to get on it this time, but I was able to get on it. Uh, and I was very thankful to be able to do so. Um, at the same time, like I said, I was barely able to get on it. The uh, number of clicks you need is two. I got two. Um, and then I was, as the roller coaster took off, I thought to myself, I'm at the bare minimum of what's needed for safety at this point. And so I held on as tight as I could the entire time of the ride. Uh, about halfway through, I realized it doesn't matter if I'm holding on. If this thing goes, I'm going. <laughs> but what I needed in my life was to have that disappointment of the first experience so that there could be a change that could be brought about in my life. You know, so often when we have those moments of disappointment, we simply focus on that thing, whether it's what we do get or what we were not able to get, and we fail to see how it might lead us to something better and how it might be part of a bigger picture in the world. You know, perhaps you do know, maybe you don't, for about five years, uh, Carlin and I were trying to move up to the hill area. We had put our house on sale, I think, two times. Uh, we had looked at multiple houses up in this area uh, because this is where we wanted to be. And each and every time, the house that we wanted either sold or our house didn't sell in time. And so we found ourselves staying where we were. 
It wasn't until I went into ministry and then was appointed here that we managed to be where we wanted to be. And you see, that was part of the bigger picture that God had for our lives. But when we look at our scripture for today, we get to see someone that doesn't have to ask why in the face of disappointment. And this particular instance also shows us how we can be grateful in the face of disappointment. And this one is of the large variety. Moses has perhaps the greatest claim to being disappointed out of anyone in the entire scriptures. He was the man who did what God asked. Even when he doubted himself, remember God called him through the burning bush and he said, I'll do my best, God, but I don't speak very well. And then he went and he stood up to the Pharaoh, perhaps the uh, most powerful man in the world at the time, speaking the truth to power that was enslaving his people because God told him to do so. And he led those people through the journey in the wilderness, listening to their constant bickering and complaining as he went through. And so far that they were even threatening his life while they were in the desert. He turned them back to God when they walked away and created an idol. But then in our scripture for today, we find him at the end of his life. Surely this will be the moment that Moses is able to cross over into the promised land. The one that he had worked so hard to lead his people to. Well, we know from the scripture that is not the case. He has been told that for his actions, if you remember, for his actions out in the desert, uh, uh, when he angrily struck the rock to produce the water for the people, he would never enter into the promised land. Now, do you think that Moses had hoped and prayed that God would change his mind? Do you think he continued to lead those people onward to the promised land, hoping that God would see his deeds and allow him to enter in? And do you think when he found out that God would not change his mind and that he truly wouldn't be allowed to enter the promised land, that he asked why? Well, scripture does not record that for us, but I think if we did any of those things, we can surely understand that he would feel disappointment at this time in his life. There's a different way, though, to view this time in Moses' life. See, perhaps he was able to step back from his own personal disappointment and see the big picture. Just maybe he was able to look out on the promised land and say to himself, I may not enter this land, but the people will. And I can take joy in that and be grateful that God has delivered them out of slavery and into this land. See, maybe Moses wasn't leading those people so that he could get to the promised land. Maybe he was leading them so they could get to the promised land. To put it another way, maybe he wasn't making the journey for himself, but doing it for them and doing it for God, because that is what he was called to. You see, for us that often want to question why we are disappointed, Moses is a reminder that there is more going on than what we might see or feel. We can look to his example of faith in the face of disappointment, Because there is no doubt that we will face disappointment in this world. There will be big moments and there will be small moments. And we often cannot control the outcomes. However, we can control how we react to those moments of disappointments. Now, I have a certain child of mine, and I will not name them today. But a moment of disappointment when it comes to them you always know that it has happened. And you always know that it has happened because they make a distinct noise whenever they have been disappointed. And that noise goes something like this. Ha! That's a very accurate interpretation uh, or impression of this particular child. But I often wonder if they will look back on those small moments of disappointment 
or if they will be able to see the big picture of life, that those small moments didn't matter. Because you see, we always have the ability to say this, Lord, I don't understand why, and perhaps I'm not meant to understand why. This thing has happened or it didn't happen, but I can trust that you know why. I can thank you, thank, be thankful to you that I am still here, and I can be thankful for all that I still have. And I can thank you for how you're walking with me during this time of disappointment. See, if we learn to face our disappointments with a sense of gratitude instead of foreboding, we can indeed find something greater than finding out the why of something happening or not happening. See, when we face our disappointments with a sense of trust in the Lord, what we can find is peace in those moments. So I pray that we are able to do so no matter what comes our way, and let us commit to being grateful even in the face of disappointment. My challenge for you this week is just to count your blessings and really think about all the things that you have to be thankful for as we head into Thanksgiving this week. Amen.